This is the Natural History Museum. Welcome to NHM Live. In a couple of minutes, you'll be meeting one of our scientists. This is your chance to ask some questions directly. We look forward to hearing from you. Let's find out who our scientist is today. My name is Jan Beccaloni and I've been at the museum for 27 years. I'm the curator of arachnids, which are spiders, scorpions, and ticks, etc., horseshoe crabs, sea spiders, centipedes, millipedes, velvet worms, and water bears. I work with my volunteers in preserving and developing and making the collections accessible. I also undertake collections research, such as looking at ancient Egyptian ticks and the effects of alcohol preservation on DNA in specimens. I also produce collections catalogues with international collaborators. Outside of the collections, I'm involved heavily with public engagement, such as talks on the galleries with specimens, behind the scenes tours, talks to the public. I'm very much involved with spider PR. This is basically a dream job for me. I've always wanted to work at the Natural History Museum since I was a child and when I first discovered spiders. Hello and welcome to NHM Live. Now today's show we're going to be looking at a group of animals that many people have very strong opinions about. I'm talking about spiders. Uh, so do send in your questions, we would love to know what you think and we are joined by a spider super fan, our curator of arachnids here at the museum, Jan Beccaloni. Jan, thank Hi. you so much for coming in. Um, you know an awful lot about spiders, so this is a perfect time for people to send in their questions. But let's start with a simple question. What is a spider? Okay, a spider is uh, an arthropod. It's got jointed legs, it's got an external skeleton, uh, and all arachnids or, or have um, two body parts, eight legs, and a pair of leg-like structures at the front called palps. And the drawer here, um, we can see all the different groups. The ones to the left, mm -hmm. my left, are not arachnids, they're centipedes and millipedes. Um, so they're all linked together by the number of legs and the number of body parts, effectively. Great, so spiders are a type of arachnids, but we've got lots of other Absolutely, types Absolutely, well. yes. Okay, well, today's show is about spiders because there's enough to talk about with spiders. There's enormous diversity, more than pe maybe people realise. How many spiders, well, do we know how many spiders there are in the whole world? Well, there are over 45,000 species wow. in the world. And of course, more and more are being named. It's still thought there are many thousands out there still to be named. Oh, you've, uh, you've very kindly brought a draw yeah. just to show a little bit of the diversity that we've got. Because there's lots of ways to be a spider within that um, Absolutely, shape that yeah. You're talking about. We, I mean, let's take a look at this uh, this big old one here. Oh yes. Um, mainly because it's one of the biggest. Yes. Uh, what type of spider uh, is that? That's called a Nephila spider or a golden orb weaver spider, and they produce really beautiful gold silk that can be made into garments that that they had at the V&A, for example, the golden cape. Um, absolutely beautiful spiders they are. Wow, fantastic. So they're what, you know, they create those webs that people are familiar with, but not absolutely. all spiders use webs. Are there any here that perhaps have a slightly different way of, of going about their spider life? Oh, definitely. Um, well, over 50% of all spider species actually don't use silk to capture their prey. Oh, right. So they yeah. have what we call a sit and wait strategy. That so sounds for much example, better, yeah. yeah, I like that. <laughs> that suits me fine. Um, so for example, these big hairy spiders, they're yeah. what we call tarantulas, mm. and they would have a sit and wait strategy. There's other spiders such as jumping spiders that would actually pursue their prey. Wow, yeah, they're incredible. We've got some photos of those that we're going to show later on. And some are actually, um, so well camouflaged that they're sitting in wait and you wouldn't even know that they're there. Um, crab Absolutely. spiders especially, they're, they're great, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, we've got uh, a few species of crab spiders in this country, one of which uh, is yellow, or quite often yellow, but it can change its colour. Wow. Um, okay, it's not instantaneous, um, but it will take a few days to change, but it will match the the flower that it's sitting on. Right. And so it's camouflaged, not only from its own predators, but from its prey. Incredible. Wow. And then and before they know it, whatever's landed there to, to sit on the flower, they've been gobbled up. Absolutely. Um, we've got a question already come in, which is fantastic, from Louise on, feast, uh, on Facebook. Uh, interesting question. I'm going to go with this. Uh, okay. 
she says that she raw feeds her pets and once uh, she saw spiders apparently snacking on the leftovers. Can they get nutrition this way from raw meat? Yes, they can actually. I've never In fact, heard of that. I, I saw a house spider once um, sucking up the juices from a bowl of cat food. Oh, so they certainly do take in moisture from their food. That's quite a, a good way. But it wouldn't be chewing on the meat because they actually only take in liquid food. So it would be sucking up the juices. Lovely. Uh, mm. Fantastic. And we're going to have a look at, at that a bit later on. Um, now, not everyone is as much of a fan as, as spiders as, as Jan is um, and we wanted to see what people thought about spiders out and about in the museum and if they didn't like spiders what was it exactly about spiders that they didn't like so we uh, we went out and filmed a few people's responses uh, take a look oh they're so cute oh they look really cute Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, pretty. Very nice. sweet, yes. Oh, that's cute Very too. Very nice, yeah. Cute. <laughs> Beautiful. Cute, yeah. Very cute nice. for yeah. me, yeah. Thank you. Oh, nice. Oh! Yay! Oh, spider. 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 spider! spider! That actually, when I look at it from close up, it actually looks really disgusting. Oh, oh. Nice. Nice. Scary. Scary. It's Scary. 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 Too speedy for my liking, and they hide in the corners. I think the unpredictability that you never quite know where they're going to be. The way they move it. really quickly. It's like creepy crawlies. It's just the colour of it and like the texture, like it's got loads of bits, bits of hair on it. It just looks absolutely gross. <laughs> the yes. hairs. The yes. eyes. Hair. Eyes. Um, Not a fan. I don't really like spiders. <laughs> no. no. What no. don't you guys like about spiders? I don't. You don't? What don't you like? I don't like no. That's my fear. It's the fact that they hide in your living room and you don't know where they are, or they're possibly in your bedroom, and then you wake up and wonder if they've been crawling over your face in the night. Or it's dangling from the ceiling. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, a few different responses, not all negative when it comes to spiders, but there are a few things that people seem to have in common about not really liking the way that spiders are. And we've had a question uh, come in on Periscope. Raisa on Periscope, she wants to know why are spiders so scary? So let's have a look at some of the reasons that people gave. And okay. one of them that kept coming up was their legginess and the way that they move, very erratic. Yeah. Would you say that's fair about spiders? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say they're scary because, of course, I love them. Okay. But um, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But certainly the, the way that they move does freak people out. Mm. And the reason behind their erraticness, where they stop and start, is because of how they breathe. They can't take enough oxygen in for uh, an elongated run. Right, so they're not marathon runners, they're more Usain Bolt. Absolutely, yes. Excellent. And that's to, to catch prey often, or is that to escape things? Well, both really, yes, definitely. Okay, so the legginess might be a little bit scary, but for the spider, it, it's for very good reason. Absolutely. Um, let's have a, another question that's come in. Um, Daria uh, on Facebook, she wants to know what, I thought this might come in, what's the most dangerous spider in the world? Because in okay. the UK, we're quite lucky, but actually there are yeah. some spiders that are very dangerous. What's, do, do we have one that's like top of the list? Well, there's several actually that are dangerously venomous to humans. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got one here. Oh, which great. Fantastic. Is, Let's take a look. Uh, a black widow spider oh and you can actually see i should have had a nice nail job really before this <laughs> uh compared to my finger size it's only a really tiny spider but it can pack a punch it can indeed and it's due to the kind of venom that they produce so it's incidental that it affects humans um obviously it didn't evolve to feed on humans um, but it just affects our nervous system. But I have to do, I do have to say here mm. that very few people die from spider envenomation now because of anti-venoms being available. Fantastic. And it's actually more um, scorpions that kill people um, rather than spiders. Really, but mm. spiders seem to get the, the worst rep. And the more that we're actually learning about them and studying them, and including ones in our collection, the better we can treat their things like spider Absolutely. Bites. Great, okay, well some of the other things that came in was, well, I think one of the boys mentioned the eyes, the spider's eyes is something that they didn't yeah. really like. 
Now, they've got a lot of eyes. <laughs> do they, they all do. have the same number of eye spiders or do we see any variation at all? Well, you do see variation. I mean, certainly most spiders have eight eyes, but yeah. you do get spiders with, say, six or even none at all. So ones that live in caves all the time have lost them through evolution. So again, that's a, an example of the lots of different ways to be a spider, that Absolutely. diversity. Absolutely. But having all those number of eyes does give them a really good advantage because the eyes are set in different positions around the, the head region wow. and so even if they can't really detect much they can still detect movement and yeah. that enables them to escape from predators wow and we saw the eyes where we can see there of the the jumping spider they're almost oh, beautiful yes. in their arrangement I'd they say. really are yeah. we've had a question and it links actually to the black widow spider actually we didn't yeah. answer what is the black widow spider the most dangerous or one, of see them, one, one of, of them one of them yes a question that's coming on periscope um, from Tenex, he wants to know, do we have to worry about the false widow spider? Now, perhaps we should explain what we mean by false widow I spider. I thought that question <laughs> might come up. Um, basically, I think the, the common name, tree? yes, we do. The common name of false widow kind of gives the wrong impression for a start because the term widow it makes you think of black widow mm. spiders. Um, they can bite, they do hurt a bit, yeah. but they're certainly, we wouldn't die from a bite at right. all, it's just a bit painful. It's not that dissimilar from maybe a, a wasp sting or a bee oh, sting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, with wasp stings, it's a lot worse because there's often more than one around, right. whereas okay. with spiders, there aren't. So they're actually about the same size as black widow spiders, um, and they are related to them, they're in the same spider right. family. Um, but they're really nothing to be worried about. Um, I would just suggest don't handle them, yeah. that's all really. Uh, we've got loads of questions coming in. Obviously, spiders is something that people are good. very interested in. Hopefully, <laughs> for good reason. Another question on Periscope, which is, uh, are spiders in the UK getting bigger? Now, that's maybe we can think about, are we seeing any changes in spiders in the UK? Maybe new ones coming in, or are the ones here getting bigger? Is there any evidence for that? They're not getting larger in size. Okay. Um, but we are seeing a spread mm. or movement across, mo moving, moving northwards of certain spider species due to global change, you know, global warming. And in, in fact, fact, Leah's just yeah. asked exactly the same question. Uh -huh. Will we be seeing new species, potentially more exotic ones, coming to the UK with climate change? Quite possibly. Right. What, what sort um, of things we can do we expect? We have uh, the wasp spider. Um, I think we've got a lovely photo of that one yes, as well, because it is absolutely photo. stunning, isn't it, the wasp spider? Yeah, where does that come from? Well, it's, it's um, you can see here it's got the colours of a, a wasp, mm. hence the name, and um, over the last few uh, years we've definitely seen a spread of it moving northwards, and it originally uh, originated on the continent, so you can see how some spiders which aren't native to the UK can accidentally be introduced mm bit like the false widow spiders um, and then once they're established then they can start to breed and spread. Is it something we should be worried about or is it just something we keep an eye on and um, maybe it might affect our, our native species at all? Um, at present we I don't think we have anything to worry about. Um, it may be in future that uh, microhabitats that the native, our native species inhabit might get overtaken by the, the foreign spiders, but I don't think we've got anything to worry about at the moment. Something to just keep an eye on. And let's quickly take another question from Joaquin, uh, from, who's five years old and he's crazy about spiders. That's what we hey. want to hear. Fantastic. <laughs> and all the creepy crawlies. He wants to know something you just talked about. Why aren't spiders as lethal as scorpions? So you're saying that scorpions were maybe more dangerous. Are they similar in terms of how dangerous they are? Um, well, I think the key thing here is the availability of the antivenom. Right. So uh, certainly with, within some spiders, closely related ones, you can use the same antivenom for different species, but that's not the case with scorpions. Okay. Um, and basically you're going to have scorpions that um, for example, the death stalker scorpion. That sounds um, pretty dangerous. It, it is actually. <laughs> it's one of the most highly venomous scorpions in the world. Uh, and that has a very broad range. So humans are going to come in contact, into contact right. with those more than they would have done. So it's not as simple as just the spider or scorpion itself. Absolutely. absolutely. Great. Well, we're straying into scorpion territory. We this are. This show is all about spiders. I don't spiders. mind, but we'll yeah, <laughs> hear about spiders. Let's, uh, I'd like to talk about something which 
in my opinion, is probably the most interesting thing about spiders, and that is their ability to produce silk. Absolutely. Um, now, most people know of it, you know, and their wonderful webs that they make, but that's not the only way that they produce uh, or, or use silk, is it? At all? Absolutely. Um, depending on the spider species, such as a common garden spider, they can have up to seven different types of silk wow. that they use to wrap their prey. They can wrap their eggs. They have what's called a drag line. So if they dropped out their web, they would come down on a thread. They wouldn't just leave out. Um, and what, they're always dragging a bit of, of silk behind them? Yes, wow. yes, because that way then they can get back to where they came from without, you know, having danger to themselves. Um, they also have different types of silk in their orb webs, so one part of the web is sticky, the other part isn't. So it's actually really very detailed, the Incredible. spider silk. And it's, it's sort of their, like their, their trick, isn't it? You know, all these different types of silk that they, they've found ways of using it in so many um, different ways. What I Absolutely. couldn't quite work out is where does it come from? Because <laughs> There's so much of it. Like, how are they making the silk? Well, the what they place? do inside their abdomen. In yeah. fact, I'd like to take this yeah, specimen take out, out to show you. Wow, that's a big one. Oh yes, <laughs> this is uh, the Goliath bird-eating spider, okay. uh, which is the heaviest of all spider species Fantastic. in the world. Not found in the UK, which is a pity. Well, and it is it, actually because I've does got it a pet eat one. But, birds? Um, not really very often. No, they do. They do eat um, vertebrates. Let's though. have a look at that. Um, and if we wow. look at its abdomen, we can see oh, yeah. finger-like structures. They're called spinnerets. Okay. And inside the abdomen, you've got silk glands, and the spider will pull out the silk using its hind leg. Or, in fact, when if it's got a drag line and it sticks the, the silk to the ground and then it moves away, it pulls the silk out. So silk isn't squeezed out, it's actually pulled out wow. and then it becomes a solid. Um, but they do have metres and metres of silk thread within their abdomens before it's depleted. And then obviously they need time to actually then regenerate the silk. Incredible. Uh, we've got lots of questions about silk actually. First off, I'm from Stefano on Facebook. Nice question this. How close are we as humans to recreating spider webs in a lab are people trying oh. to do this because there's that thing that they're even stronger than steel at the same time absolutely yeah. i mean silk for us humans is an amazing substance it's certainly a lot stronger than kevlar so it would make wow. much better bulletproof vests and that kind of thing we can use it in microsurgery if we're stitching up um, like nerves and such like it's Incredible. fantastic material um, but certainly there are commercial companies out there who are producing it on a commercial scale and in fact um, I read something recently about a Japanese firm who produced a, like a mountaineering jacket. A bit expensive at the moment, a thousand pounds or so. How many so. spiders does it but, take to make um, a, a mountaineering jacket? Well I would have I would hate to guess, but um, <laughs> clearly they're doing some genetic engineering and, and producing silk that way, because you couldn't actually have a spider farm with all the spiders in together, because of course they'd all eat each other. Yeah, that's so, a, not a great it's a workforce, is it? <laughs> One more really quite good question from Periscope. Um, Tenix, another question from Tenix. Um, how do they rebuild their webs so quickly? Because something oh, people maybe don't yes. realise is actually even uh, the garden cross spider in, in, our, in the UK mm. will often make a new web every single night. But as you say, it's a, it's a big resource. How are they able to do it so quickly? They actually um, will re, uh, take in the, the, dissolve the silk mm. using enzymes from the mouth. Um, they'll absorb it and they will reuse around 90% of the silk. Wow, so they basically sort of eat it. Yeah, and recycle they're the it. ultimate recyclers because it's otherwise it's, it's very costly yeah. to the, the spider otherwise. Fantastic. But not all spiders uh, make webs with their silk. Absolutely. Some of them um, use it for nests or even Absolutely. trap doors. And we've Absolutely. actually got a lovely trap door we have. that you can show us. Maybe you can explain, because it's quite a primitive spiders that do this. Yes. How are they using silk then? Okay. Let's have a look. Pop that there. Oof. They, they, I know we're... We're not meant to be scared of them, but that, they do make me feel a bit funny, the trapdoors. Because well, you wouldn't know they were there, would you? No, you wouldn't. If, if you that, can imagine, beautiful. okay, that's on the forest floor. Yeah. It's got some leaves around it and everything. You would never actually see that until the door is open. And look at that. And we can actually see there the hinge and the entire um, 
part of the, the, the trap is actually lined with silk mm. and so the spider that's one of the the original uses for silk actually was to line burrows and such like but you can see how it uses the silk to create the hinge and then when it goes into the burrow uh it can close the 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 burrow lid and then be hidden away from predators but it will have some threads of silk coming out of the the burrow entrance mm. and then anything that walks along will touch the silk and it will indicate to the spider yet yeah, and the spider will come out and grab and it and do they know exactly where to jump out because of the they can feel the, the vibrations wow. in that part of the silk Ooh, it's like a trip line it's sort of a booby it is trap. absolutely yeah awesome yeah. fantastic um do keep sending your questions in we've had some lovely ones coming in so far um we've talked a bit about the different ways that uh, spiders live, their silk, the, we talk about their eyes. But actually, some people might think, you know, why, why should we care about spiders? What do they ever do for us? Or what do they do for you know, the environment? Do they, what sort of role do spiders have to play? Well, certainly they're really, really good in biocontrol. Okay. Um, and in fact, um, in the US, for example, uh, spiders are used much more to um, reduce the number of pests around crops, for example. And so they, these growers don't now use chemicals to kill off everything. They're just shipping um, some spiders. They actually <laughs> will allow the spiders to do their thing naturally, wow. and it keeps down the pests much better. Um, and certainly in our own homes, they can act very much um, in keeping the like, moths and things down as well. So, that, that relates yeah. to, um, Daria, Daria's got a question on Facebook again. Um, how to get rid of a spider. So we're not going to answer that question exactly. So maybe we should say, should we get rid of a spider? And you were just touching on that I would there. say no. Okay. We want to keep them, definitely. Okay, cool. Because we shouldn't be worried about them. No, definitely okay. not. Okay, excellent. Fantastic. Um, one thing that I would like to talk about as well, um, people might not know, is spiders are... Um, I don't want to say romantic, but they have some interesting <laughs> ways of attracting uh, a mate, don't oh, they? Oh, yes. What are the different ways that a male spider will try and woo a female spider? Yes, that's a lovely way of putting it, David. <laughs> I like that. Um, basically, it's really important, first of all, that because we know that there's over 45,000 species of spiders in the world, yeah. um, that the male spider has to demonstrate to the female spider that he's the correct species for a start. That's sort of So he's not wasting one, his it? time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, very importantly for him, as an individual, he's ensuring that the female is actually receptive to his advances. Right. Because if she is, and it could all go horribly wrong, and it can end up as dinner. So um, spiders, different spider groups have evolved different ways of ensuring that the female is interested, um, from leg stroking and all that kind of thing. Um, but peacock spiders have got to be one of the most amazing uh, groups of spiders that have evolved a courtship dance and because dance. Of, yeah they have such yeah they sort really the, the use all the, they do they, they <laughs> use their palps they use their abdomen they use their legs they might wave their wow. legs um, and with the peacock spiders they actually move their abdomen and they've got a fringe of hairs around the outside of their abdomen and they move it up a bit like a peacock tail hence the, the, the name. name but also they're really brightly colored so they use a combination of color and movement to attract the females and their hairs are highly pigmented so they've got all these beautiful oranges wow. and blues and yellows and go. they use all that color and movement to attract the females so a really amazing courtship I've got friends that have got similar techniques but it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem to work very well uh, let's take a couple more questions um wow this is one I've, I've never thought about this do spiders have hearts to, blood, Ooh, to pump blood around they the do have a basic heart yes because they that still was from have Jen, sorry thank you Jen <laughs> they do have uh, a blood circulation mm. um it the the color of their blood is blue rather than red um, because it has a different oxygen carrying pigment um, but they certainly have hearts that pump round the the Incredible. blood so what color was their blood sorry? bluish color bluish. Mm. wow amazing mm. um well let's finish with this question from tenex again on periscope uh how can you convince a teenager that spiders are not something to be morbidly scared of so this is our final message to people maybe a bit of a Ooh. summary of what we talked about what would be your okay. the main things that you would talk about well, spiders are amazingly diverse. Mm -hmm. um, 
they're found all over the world they have fantastic courtship they're really good mothers they look after their young they look awesome and um, peacock spider has got to be one of the most beautiful spiders ever um, you have to look at them differently i think that's that's the whole key don't be afraid of them be in awe of them Wonderful. What a, what a lovely message. So next time you see a spider, don't necessarily run away from it. Just stop and think about perhaps how it's living its life and all the other spider friends that it's got. Uh, <laughs> living to totally weird and wonderful ways as well. Absolutely. Thank you ever so much, Jan. Thank we could have you. talked much more about spiders, but you've given us a real taste, a real flavour, and do find out more. Thank you very much for your questions. We've had some really great ones come in. Jan will go and uh, actually answer a few more on the web, a different type of web, uh, <laughs> answer a few more once we finish this. So do keep them coming in. Um, and next week, we're back with another NHM Live. So tune in then and, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Spiders are great.